All right, let's take this further now with public health specialist at the University of Cape Town, Dr. Karen Begg. Good evening. Thank you so much for your time, as always. So AstraZeneca, South African government, really, really disappointed. We were hoping to get cracking with our vaccine rollout, and now it's all on hold. Do you think governments made the right decision? So I think that um, it was something that we were concerned about, that that might be the case. When, we, uh, when the announcement was made around the new variant uh, that particularly um, had some changes and mutations in the spike protein and particularly the end point of the spike protein, which is the area that uh, is particularly targeted for our immune system to be primed um, in order to defend against the, um, the, the, the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Um, so remember that what we have is a, is a virus that has little, little uh, proteins on it, and it's those proteins which are used, which our body recognizes as, a, as an intruder and therefore builds our immune response against. And, and it's those proteins that we actually have used in the, vac in the development of the vaccines. So um, now we have a new variant with a slightly differently shaped uh, spike protein, and so it was a concern that mm. that, the, the, that we might reduce efficacy. So I think it was it was expected. I think um, what we need to understand is that it was a different question being asked in this particular trial. So so in October when we got the results of the Oxford Astra, AstraZeneca uh, trial that on the existing variants, the pre-existing variants. Uh, it showed uh, exceptionally good um, protection against severe disease. So in that trial, uh, in those, uh, at that stage, we were looking at severe disease, um, at protection against severe disease, and therefore the trial um, participants were elderly and with comorbidities because they are at more risk of severe disease, and it showed really good protection. Uh, we then went on to a second study um, to kind of build on top of that to look at the, um, whether it was protective against mild disease. And so the study participants were young and no comorbidities. And, uh, but what changed in the, in the meantime yeah. while we were recruiting those vaccines is that the new variant appeared. Exactly. And so now the answer that we have is, not to, is to a different question. And that question is, does it protect against mild disease? And the answer is no. There's no difference and between it and the, and, and the, um, and the placebo. Yeah. So actually, you know, we don't really know. Whether, Can I ask you a question? Like exactly. So there's a lot that we don't know. Um, the, we, 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 it doesn't seem to be very effective in preventing mild to moderate. Um, and we don't actually know what it would do with a severe infection of this new variant. We don't know if it could prevent that because that actually hasn't been researched in human trials yet. Um, is that correct? So is there, is there really any use at all for this vaccine? Well, absolutely, because remember that, that, um, that were you priming the immune system for, um, for the, the variants for which it was designed? And at the moment, the 501YV2 uh, variant is the predominant variant in South Africa, but it may change yet again. And so we, mm -hmm. you know, by priming our immune systems to that spike protein, is uh, is is a good idea. And and what we're looking at is that we may be able to then have booster doses from a different vaccine that, uh, for instance, the J and J, which which has been shown to be effective against severe disease. Um, and of this variant, then um, we may be able to have a booster uh, provided by, by a different vaccine. And, and those trials are happening overseas. They're not sure. yet happening in South Africa, but those trials are happening. What are, what are the odds? Because I, if I recall correctly, AstraZeneca does still seem quite confident that it could protect against severe illness, even of the new variant. But what are the odds if it can't even prevent mild to moderate infection with the new variant, that it could prevent severe infection of the new variant what are the odds so it's so some of the challenge is that um, when you have severe disease it's generally because you've had a high viral load and your body uh, mounts a significant immune response so we know that even without the vaccine that severe disease gives us better immunity um, and in fact the reason why uh, in part that that herd immunity will not work from natural infection one is because of the, of the, of the mutations but two is because actually the immunity from mild disease doesn't last. 
uh, and that we've been able to show from studies. So there's, um, it's not, uh, it's not completely impossible that that the, the that the vaccine can indeed work against uh, against severe disease. Remember, it was it was tested in a very different kind of population. It was tested at 30 year olds, mm. uh, young and healthy and fit. Um, and 2000 is, is not a small, uh, you know, it's, it's not a, a terribly small trial, but it's not a huge trial either. So it probably is worth doing um, extended trials. I think that um, uh, if, as, a, as a healthcare worker, um, I'm not first on the list because I'm not uh, as much patient facing as, as some of my colleagues. So they would be first on the list. I would certainly take the vaccine tomorrow. And, uh, and look forward to uh, a booster um, in the future. But there's no question that uh, given the information right. available to us, even with the uncertainties, I would take the vaccine tomorrow. Very quick question. Um, you're saying that even though the efficacy has not proven very strong in the small limited study that we have seen in humans, uh, but you're saying that the virus or the vaccine rather, the AstraZeneca vaccine can still prime the system and prepare it for perhaps a booster, a mix and match booster, which is how I'm thinking of it. Do you think Sorry. then, uh, with, with that view that you have, we shouldn't actually be putting this on hold at all? We should actually just carry on and wait for a more effective booster a few months down the line? My suspicion is um, that, that in all likelihood, the on hold is, is very short. It, it's going to be days to a week or so. We were due to start vaccinating in the country on Wednesday. Certainly in the Western Cape, we were preparing for, for Monday, the 15th. Um, I don't think that it'll be on hold for much longer than that. Um, and so I think that, that uh, we need to go full steam ahead. We're also testing a whole bunch of logistics and, and a storage capacity and transfer and transport. So there's, there's lots more to vaccine administration. Um, remember that, that vaccines are not effective in their own rights. They are only effective when they are vaccinated into a human being. So, uh, so there's lots to test uh, in terms of our health system, uh, broader capabilities as well. And um, first, do no harm. We know that it's safe. So, um, so that it'll, it'll cause no harm. And uh, if, uh, if it doesn't cause as much benefit as we'd hoped, that's, that's unfortunate. Uh, but at the same time, I do believe that there will be some, some benefit um, that we will be experiencing. So even if we start to reduce some of the viral load that's transmitted um, between patients, that, that's already a huge benefit. So I, I certainly would be taking it. And, um, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't worry about the expiry date. It's a red herring. Um, the expiry date is, um, is really about that we have six months data. We only started this disease, you know, even even uh, describing it a year ago. We only started with vaccines uh, just just on 11 to 12 months ago. Uh, we've developed vaccines. They've been through through three phases of trials, and uh, we only have six months of data, which is actually yeah. quite phenomenal. That uh, that we have vaccine stability data and uh, yet. So once as time goes on, so those manufacturers will get. The, the, the data will be extended and they'll say, yes, actually the vaccine now that we have another month down the line, we know that it's still stable after another month. It's There's still no usable. Reason yeah. That, that these vaccines won't still be, 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 um, be stable after 12 months. So right. there's no reason that the potency should still not be there um, a few months later. But hopefully we'll have used them all before it's called anyway. <laughs> Let's hope so. And thank you very much. Always so clear. Voice of reason there. Public health specialist at the University of Cape Town, Dr. Karen Beck. She says she would still take that vaccine tomorrow.